From Fox 8 Sports, this is the Overtime Podcast. From the Fox 8 Studios in New Orleans, this is the Fox 8 Overtime Podcast. I am your host, Sean Flazan, right next to me, riding shotgun as he does each and every time we do a podcast, Andre Johnson Jr. Before we get into today's content, be sure to like, share, rate, review. If you are watching us on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button, get the bell notifications for when we drop that fire content it is friday good friday happy good friday happy yes. easter weekend to all of you out there and uh andre johnson jr bit of a milestone on this channel um it's not exactly the anniversary but it on saturday march 30th will mark the one year anniversary hey. of the fox 8 overtime podcast youtube channel it has grown a lot in a one year time frame so thank you for watching if you found us uh, in this space it really has grown and grown and grown if you've watched this podcast on this channel you've seen a few different looks we had the the digital look um <laughs> the green we screen. had we had the, the the table behind us with kind of a coffee table look uh and now we have the uh the brick here behind us with a couple by the way have you guys ever wondered what that knight helmet is do you know I don't know. I've always wanted right. to That is the original New Orleans Knight arena football team back Ooh. in the early 90s. The New Orleans Knight. That is the oh, that man. is the New Orleans Knight helmet. I have no idea how we had it, uh, but Blaine Strong, one of our uh, uh, marketing uh, executives here, he had this football, or excuse me, this helmet available, and we kind of used it to, to put it up behind us. That is truly before my time, because <laughs> I grew up on the New Orleans voodoo, yeah, which might be before the time of some of our listeners. Exactly. And it, look, and um, maybe that's just kind of, you know, the, the generations coming together here. You know, <laughs> look, about a year ago, um, I was watching, first off, this, this, this podcast space has really grown, and it's really grown on YouTube. And I was watching uh, just a couple of Saints podcasts uh, on YouTube. And about a year ago, it was a little bit before a year, so a little over a year ago, um, I had a meeting with the uh, news director, uh, Kristen, and I said, we, we got to get into the space. We have to get into the space. I'm telling you, it's growing, it's growing. and Because I, I, I saw how many people were, were reacting to uh, the type of Saints content, the type of, the type of Saints podcast that were out there. And a lot of times it was the work that we were doing as reporters that they were right. citing in these podcasts. So I was like, we got to get a, we got to get a piece of the action. And, and we've done that. And um, I'm sure more changes will be on the way, but I want to just say thank you to all of you. Thank you, Andre Johnson Jr. for being here because uh, the original guy there was Facilios. Yep. He took a job in DC. You stepped up and filled in nicely as well well so i appreciate you being here and um we keep rocking and rolling here uh, as we keep moving right along on the fox 8 overtime podcast as for the sports calendar we have reached a little bit of that that in between lull i like to call it because it's free agency is still out there but it's kind of over right. at least the big names and it, the, the the headlines are kind of died down the draft is still far away it's usually there's late march early april uh, time frame where it just, you hit a little bit of a sweet spot where you're kind of in between both worlds there. Um, so I thought it was a good time to really just take a look at what I think is one of the, we've discussed it, the, the biggest Saints, the biggest Saints concern um, with the news of Ryan Ramchek and the already vulnerable state they were in at the tackle position. And that is what's out there. What could we reasonably look at and say, you know, that could potentially be a target. Absolutely. And with Ryan Ramchek, the news coming out that he's not progressing as well in his recovery mm -hmm. from that knee injury as you would hope. And there's even a chance, according to some reports, that he might miss the entire 2024 season. Mm -hmm. So now as the Saints, you got to pivot. Yeah, You got to look into free agency and obviously about two weeks have passed since the start of free agency. So the pickings are a little more bare than maybe they would have been two mm -hmm. weeks ago. And even more importantly, you got to look in the draft. Yeah, it's got to have a major effect on who you were looking to pick with uh, that 14 draft pick that you're going to have in April. So, Sean, knowing who's still out there in free agency, knowing who's about to come into the NFL draft, it's a uh, you know pro day season, so you're seeing a right. lot of pro days from these guys. Who are some names that yeah. maybe you can look to 
if you're the Saints? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I wanted I, I I divided this into two categories. So let let's start with the most immediate availability, which is obviously free agency. And right. Obviously, the draft is is what they're going to hopefully find a cornerstone at that position. Um, because it's a good draft for that. But, you know, a lot of things have to happen before you can actually get a draft pick. In free agency, there are guys available, and there are guys you can sign. Now, I have to be honest with you. I'm going to read a few of the names off here. If you're excited about this list, congratulations. You might be the only one, (laughs) because it's just at this stage of the game, you're just not going to find that premier guy available on the open market that you can just have no doubt about. But you do have to fill that spot. You do have to bring some, some someone in multiple people in, if we're going to be honest, to give yourself the best possible chance to have a a good offensive line, which is something that this offense obviously needs. So in the free agent market, I'm going to just read off some names. I don't know if you have any extra names, so if you have a few extra, feel free to name them. A name we know, Andrus Pete, 30 years old. A name we know, Cameron Irving. A name we know, I think he's 31 years old. I don't know if you remember this name. Donovan Smith mm-hmm. is a name that's available. Um, the one that's probably the one that's probably going to gain the, uh, garner the most attention. Makai Becton at 24 years old, a massive human being. Uh, Andre Dillard, a uh, former draft pick, 28 years old. Uh, David Bacciari, who at one point in time was the NFL offensive tackle's favorite offensive tackle. Uh, yep. NFL offensive linemen, when they were asked who was the best tackle in the league, they would always point to David Bacciari, 32 years old. A lot of injuries. We know what happens when you deal with stuff like that. And then there's Prince Tega Wanogo, uh, played for the Chiefs, uh, 26 years of age. Do you have any other names to add to that? Those are all the guys I've had. Okay. The, the three guys I had you just named. And of those names, um, I got to tell you, man, um, It's Andrus Pete for me. I, I don't. I don't know what else you can really do. At least you know what you're getting with Andrus Pete. He's a guy that knows the system. He's a guy. I've never been a, a huge Andrus Pete, you know, fanboy or anything like that. I just. I mean, he's always been a guy that's kind of been around, been enough, been good enough to be a starter, and somehow he's just kind of managed to hang and hang and be a starter. And at times it looked like he was on his way out, and all of a sudden, uh, he was back on a restructured contract or a redone contract, flipping positions. And last year he stepped up, <coughs> and obviously. Uh, did some good things for the Saints and kind of saved them <laughs> at that tackle position. So, um, Andrus Pete would be one. Uh, Irving's a guy that's kind of a, a, a backup uh, that, that filled in when, when necessary. Makai Becton is the name that I think a lot of people will look to. Would he be a fit? Could they afford him? Pro- they probably could. Would, would he be somebody you would look at as, as a possibility? The problem with Makai Becton is the second thing you said, and that's could they afford him, yeah. you know? Makai Becton is a former first-round pick. He's 24 years old at the premier offensive line position, if you will, playing tackle. Mm-hmm. Makai Becton's not going to come cheap, you know. Yeah. If there's anybody on that list I look to and I'm like, hmm, and it's almost counterproductive when you think about how much we've talked about the Saints trying to get younger mm-hmm. and get away from bringing in older guys. Yeah. But ba- the David Bakhtiari yeah. from Green Bay one of the best offensive linemen in the league for a long stretch of time. Oh, yeah. Now, obviously, you're not bringing him here to, you know, have a long yeah. run in New Orleans, but as a relatively cheap at this point of his career, almost like a rental, a guy who you can bring in, who you can have confidence, if he can stay healthy, he can hold down that tackle position. He's going to be great for the Trevor Pinnings, the Nick Saldaveris, assuming you draft one, and we'll get to that a little later, Mm -hmm. he's going to be a great influence on those younger guys that you need to actually bear fruit that you already have in your offensive line room. Mm -hmm. So to me, if there's any guy who I'm like, he's the one who they need, it's David Bakhtiari. You kind of talked me into that. Um, He he was kind of, man, he's had some health issues, 32 years old, but... If he can give you anything, and he's someone that can come in, he would become cheap, obviously. Right. A one-year deal. We we'll keep with the theme of the free agency of one-year deals all around. Everyone gets a one-year deal if you're signing with the Saints this year. Um, and obviously, if he's got a little bit left in the tank, he can give you something, and hopefully he can hold that spot until a younger player could emerge at that spot. So I, I could be talked into that. Um, but I think there's no easy answer right and, and that's that's the problem that you find that the saints find themselves in if we're we're doing this on paper and we, we ain't got to pay them and we just we just talk about it <laughs> you can imagine how it uh how it must be uh inside the saints organization right now because it's not just one player mm-hmm. many two 
I, I still you can you could talk about uh, uh, Udo uh, Ali Udo. Uh, you can talk about James Hurst, but both those guys have always been sort of utility reserve type guys filling in a pinch. I don't know if you can really can they really be starters and. Hurst obviously has been, and Penning is such a question mark. So I just, I don't, with a new offensive line coach, I just don't know where you turn. The problem is when you go to find answers on a free agent market, you I don't know if you're going to find a better option anywhere either. So they're in this weird catch-22 where they know they got to add players, but you're not going to be sure if any of those players on the free agent market are guaranteed to step up and be a legitimate starter for you. You don't have to be an all-pro. Just be a legitimate starter in the NFL. Right, just... Keep your quarterback clean. Mm -hmm. We know that you're not going to have a guy. If there was a guy who you could bring in in a free agency and he could solve that problem for the next four or five years, number one, the Saints probably wouldn't have enough money to get him. And number two, he'd already be on a roster. Exactly. So looking at the guys out there, I think right now it's not a question that what you have on the roster right now isn't enough. Mm Mm-hmm especially with the news of the Ram check injury. So you're going to have to bring somebody else in. I think bringing in another veteran like our Andrews Pete, like you said, he's familiar with mm-hmm. the system. He knows how this goes. Uh, obviously, new offensive coordinator, new offensive line coach, but mm-hmm. bringing in a guy with familiarity in New Orleans who hasn't necessarily garnered the attention in the free agency that maybe he might have hoped, Andrews Pete, bringing him back would be nice. Bringing back... Like you said, you had some familiar names in there. Bringing one of those guys here. Cam Irving. Yeah, Cam Irving. I'm big on Bakhtiari as Mm -hmm. a veteran and as a guy who if you put Bakhtiari out there at tackle, I don't have to worry about him. I know he is not going to be a liability on the offensive line. He may not be what he was at age 25, but he won't be a liability. And in that locker room and in that offensive line room, he is going to be a huge aid to the guys who are in there. So to me, that's not my number one target through free agency, but – even past free agency, you get to the point where you start looking in the draft. Mm-hmm. Because at first, we kind of identified defensive end mm-hmm. as being the same yeah, need. Right. We were talking about maybe wide receiver. Brian Thomas is a name yeah. that's kind of picked up a lot of speed. We were talking about maybe even tight end. You were big on Brock Bowers if he's still, still there am. at 14. Still in, but I don't know if it's going to be, I don't know if you can bypass the tackle now. <laughs> right. But now, without a, uh, Ryan Ramchek, and even if you sign a guy, your number one priority heading into April's draft has got to be right tackle. Has to be. It has to be. And here are some names here that, you know, with the Saints picking at 14, who could potentially be available. I I divided this into two categories. One's the guys available at 14, and the other, it's a deep tackle class. Mm -hmm. So players that could potentially be available into the second round is the second stack here. Um, You know, the name I like a lot is, um, I watched his tape a lot, is, is... Troy Fatanu, uh, mm-hmm. the six foot four, three hundred seventeen pounder uh, out of Washington. Not he's the shortest of all these guys, but he's got long arms for a six foot four guy. I watched him; really is fluid when he moves. Uh, really gets light on his feet when he's got a back pedal and, and the pass cover or pass uh, blocking. He's a guy that gets to the second level nicely. Didn't really get see him get beat a whole lot. I he, if he was the guy they liked. I would I would not have any problem with him at 14. The other one that I really really like, and I about an hour ago I watched uh, a fresh uh, film study on him, and that I'm real I'm initially Fontana was the was my number one pick, but now I'm starting to pivot more towards Alu Fashanu, the Penn State mm-hmm. uh, left tackle, um, six foot six, three hundred twelve pounds. That, interesting enough, he's six six, three twelve. He doesn't have as long of arms as uh, Troy Fontana, who, oh. who's at uh, six foot four. I don't know how much they they. They do that in terms of height and, and length and that in that regard, how much it offsets. But nonetheless, this guy is really light on his feet. Very silky smooth in transition when he comes to pass blocking. Probably the best overall pass blocker in this class. And look, 6'6", 312, that fits the prototype of what this new offensive line, uh, new offense typically goes for with the wide zone stretch bootleg where those guys really got to move they got to pull they got to get to the second level and you watch them in pass blocking man it is just so smooth with the hand placement even when he gets beat he's able to recover uh, off of a false step I mean he played in the Big Ten that had some pass rushers last yep. year very very smooth and I, he has really ascended to the top in terms of he's available at 14 you need to tackle he might be one Troy Fontano two the other name uh, Talis Fuaga out of Oregon State. Um, he's a little heavier than some of the other guys. He's 6'6", 324, uh, 33 and a 
eighth inch uh, length when it comes to arms, arm length. So maybe not quite uh, length and height. Uh, well, I guess he's got the height, but uh, uh, length and I guess you call it weight. Um, he played a lot of right tackle at Oregon State. He's someone that I think would put at number three. And there's two, I mean, I'm talking beasts, two beasts that would be available or possibly be available. And you've probably seen the names linked to them in mock drafts if you're looking them up, especially if you're on this podcast here. Um, J.C. Latham yep. out of Alabama, 6'6", 342, and Amarius Mims out of Georgia, 6'8", 340 pounds, 36 and an eighth inch arm length. So that's it. Fatanu, Fuaga, Fashanu, Latham, Latham, and Mims. And if I had my pick, top dog would be Fashanu for me. Yep, and I was looking at a lot of mocks earlier. I probably yeah. went through about 15 or 20 mock drafts. All that have come out since the Ryan Ramchek news drop because I was kind of curious in how the shift in thinking would be mm-hmm. now that Ramchek's not going to be around. Mm-hmm. And of the 18, of the 18 mocks I looked at, 17 had the Saints picking an offensive line. Uh, I mean, that makes sense. A lot of the guys you just said, Fashanu, J.C. Latham, Troy Fatanu, uh, Taluis Fuga, mm-hmm. the one mock draft that didn't had the Saints picking Brian Thomas, wide receiver from LSU. But the Saints, we, we've talked a lot about how this isn't necessarily a situation that you want to be in, but there is one bright side. There is one silver lining, and that's when you look at the order of the teams. Now, obviously, mm-hmm. the guys picking in front of the Saints may change because there could be a lot of trades, a lot of moves, people wanting to move up, move back, yada, yada, yada. But as you go through those teams, Chicago, they're not going to get an offensive lineman. They're going no. quarterback, almost certainly. Washington, expected to get a quarterback. New England, expected to go quarterback. Arizona, New York Giants, both expected to maybe go offensive line. And Arizona's probably going to trade out. I'm not offensive line. I'm sorry, wide receiver. Yeah, Yeah, and and if Arizona doesn't trade out. So for for a team going up to get a quarterback. Right, and a lot of people have linked Minnesota, another team ahead of the Saints, to moving up Mm -hmm. and getting a quarterback. And in that area between the New York Giants and the Saints, you've got the Titans, Atlanta, Chicago again, Mm -hmm. the Jets, and the Raiders, but you've also got guys like Romo Dunze, the wide receiver from yeah. Washington. He's going to be picked in there. Brock Bowers, he may get picked in there. Dallas Turner, who's considered to be the best pass rusher in this draft, he's going to be in there. Joe Alt, another offensive lineman. He's, but, yeah, and I didn't even put him on this list because yeah, I didn't think he'd be he'll available at 14. He's probably be gone by the time the Saints He's the get consensus there. number one tackle. In this exactly. Class. So a lot of the guys we're talking about, maybe in a different year you might see maybe three or four or five offensive linemen get picked before 14. But this year, there's so many teams that need quarterbacks. There are three talented talented wide receivers in Marvin Harrison (laughs) Jr., Malik Neighbors, and Romo Dunze that are going to get picked in that top 13. You're going to see at least three or four, maybe even five quarterbacks picked in that top 13. You're going to see at least one or two pass rushers. You're going to see Joe Alt. So by the time it gets to the Saints, a lot of these offensive tackles, offensive linemen who you would consider to be the cream of the crop in this very deep class, they're going to be there. Yeah, and and, and let's just let's just talk it out real quick. Caleb Williams, right? Jaden Daniels, Drake May, and I'm gonna say JJ McCarthy because it gets picked before 14. That's four. Malik Neighbors and Marvin Harrison Jr. are going to go before 14. So that's six. Yep. We haven't got to a tackle yet. Exactly. Let's go with the main tackle. Joe Alt. Yep. Okay, so that's seven. Um, Romo Dunze is probably Romo Dunze possibly. Jared Verse. Yep. Uh, Dallas Turner. We haven't got to a tackle yet. Exactly. Oh, except for Joe Alt. So we're at 10. So you can do the math there. If you're you're at 10, 10 rolls around and only one tackle's taken off the board, you're in a very good spot to land one of these guys. That was always the silver lining about this vulnerability at tackle is this is the year to be in the market for a tackle if you want to do it via the draft route. And I got to tell you, I said it in the last pod, the one that really jumps out in terms of I, he could be day one ready is Fashanu. Right. That's the one that, that sticks out to me in terms of being day one ready is uh, Alu Fashanu. Now, let me let me just pivot for a second. If for some reason it doesn't go that way, and all of a sudden there's a crazy run on tackles, and the Saints are at 14, and there's a gap between there's that top tier tackle that they wanted, mm-hmm. they're all gone, and there's a gap between the next tier, and you've got to be forced to stand pat, roll the dice, and 
who's available at 45 or who's in striking distance at 45. That's the next list I have right here. So who are the names? Um, Arizona's Jordan Morgan. It's probably a late first, early second, 6'5", 311, so fits the prototype. A little short in the arms, though, 32 and 7 eighths. Um, Tyler Guyton might be a little bit of wishful thinking there, probably more of a late 20s pick, so that might be a little bit more wishful thinking, but maybe there's a striking distance in order to maybe go up uh, and get a player like that. And then Houston's Patrick Paul is a guy that I like a lot as well. Six foot seven and a half, 331 pounds. If he's slingering around there in the 40s, that could be something that they're using, let's just say for, for just for the sake of argument, the tackles are off the board or or they have their board stacked and lo and behold, you're at 14 and our number two guy is still available. Right. Oh, wow, we got to pick him. Well, what could be available later in the draft or in the next round of the draft or later first round, early second? Those would be the names, in my opinion. Jordan Morgan, uh, Patrick Paul, and again, Tyler Guyton, probably a little bit of wishful thinking there out of Oklahoma. But nonetheless... It's our game. We're going to play it. So uh, th- that would be sort of the strategy there. And I, you, you got to play that scenario out in your head or if you're the Saints because I know they play those scenarios out because sometimes there's a guy you don't expect to be there and he's just screaming to pick him. And other times there's a, a handful of guys you hope to be there and one by one they're all taken off the board. So you got to adjust your thinking. Yeah, and as of right now, again, we don't know how the Saints will move and maneuver in the next few weeks. Mm -hmm. But as of right now, it is so important, so important to hit on your first and your second (sighs) round pick. My goodness. Because remember, as the board is set up, the Saints draft board, they've got a first round pick, they've got a second round pick, no third, no fourth. So after your pick in the middle of the second round, Mm -hmm. you're not drafting again until all the way in the fifth round, which means all those guys in the third and fourth rounds where teams are able to get steals, unless you make a trade to get back into the third or fourth round, you're not getting one of those guys. So you need to ace your first or second because you've got over, what, like almost 80-something There's picks? There's a huge gap. I think, I, it pick. might be even close to 100. Right. Like from 45 to like somewhere around 150. I know that because we did the pod, and I, I've said this. Somehow, some way, if you're the Saints, some kind of strategy to me, given where you're at, what you need, what you, were, what you did or did not do in free agency, where you're at as an organization, you have to do whatever you can to get at least four picks in the top 150. And as of right now, you have two. Yep. So get yourself into, well, it might be, you, the, the first fifth round pick might be like 149 or 150. I got I to gotta double check on that. But nonetheless, you get what I'm saying. Get some, get a couple of, a pick or two in that gap. Uh, but until they do so, um, right now they've got to nail the first and second round selections with A plus pluses. Hopefully they can do it. Anything else for us today? Oh, nope, I'm good. All right, that's a good. That's a good. That was a good discussion there. Yeah, we got the, the the tackle market there. Uh, it's the holiday weekend. Good Friday today, and uh, happy Easter uh, to all those out there. Have a great weekend. When we come back on Monday. There just might be a little bit of a mock draft okay. situation from yours truly. Stay tuned to Fox 8 Overtime Podcast for the latest on Monday. Until then, for Andre Johnson Jr., I am Sean Fazan. We'll catch you guys next time on Overtime.